Hey guys, Dimitri here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new feature in Cinema 4D R20, ProRenders Multipasses. Usually, a render coming out of a 3D package is just the first step in the post-process cycle. Very rarely, an image straight out of a render will be ready for final delivery. So, in order for us to not go crazy in the editing process, we need a good and fast way to select the areas that need adjusting. This is where multipasses come in. We had those for years in the physical render, but now they are also added in ProRender. In order to enable them, we need to first switch to ProRender and then go to the Multipasses tab and enable Render Multipasses. The first three options will make up our image if they're added together. The ones responsible for the selections we want in post are the last three options, Object ID, Object Group ID, and Material ID. Let's see those in more detail. Let's start with the Object ID. The Object ID will assign every object a different color, which in turn will allow us later on to easily select each object in Photoshop or any other image editor. Let's see how that works. I will enable Direct Illumination and Object ID. Let's do a render and open it up in Photoshop. Our image contains two layers, the Direct Illumination and the Object ID layers. They are set in Additive mode, but since we're not really compositing these layers together, let's set them to Normal mode and see how the Object ID layer looks like. As you can see, all the objects have a different color. Now, to select the object we want, we can do it in multiple different ways, but I usually prefer the color range method. So I'll just go to the select menu, then color range, and then just pick the color that represents the object we want to adjust. So far, so good. Now, let's say we don't want to have each of the white and black board spaces as separate masks. We just want to have the white spaces as one mask and the black as another. This is where the Object Group ID comes into place. With this option, we can group together all the elements we want as one and assign them a color. So, to do that, we just need to locate the white and black board spaces and then assign them a compositing tag. There, we will find a new tab called ProRender and the option to set the color for the group ID. I assigned a different color for each group and now all we need to do is enable the object group ID in the render settings and hit render. Now as you can see we have three layers, the two we already had before and one more that contains the groups exactly how we set them up in cinema. So again, to modify our image we just use the color range to select the areas we want to adjust and then start modifying as needed. But what about the Material ID option? Material ID allows us to pick specific areas on an object based on the material. Let's see a really simple example. In this scene, our object is basically this one cube multiplied several times through a cloner. The cube has three different materials applied to it through selection tags. Now, if we enable the Material ID in ProRender and then hit Render, this is the result we get. Each material has its own selection, and now all we need to do is repeat the process we did before. We go to the color range, select the area we want to adjust, and then modify as we please. Fast and simple. With these three options, Object ID, Object Group ID, and Material ID, we have a lot of control over our image. We can pretty much adjust and refine anything we want. One thing to keep in mind, all of these passes are not anti-aliased. If we want to enable that, we need to go to this area here and enable the passes we want to have anti-aliasing. This will make the edges of our passes super clean. Enabling anti-aliasing won't affect render times that much. It's usually 1 or 2 seconds extra per pass, so the impact on render times is negligible. And that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you on the next one.